Book Interrupted has been nominated for a People's Choice Podcast Award. We'd like to thank our fans for all your support. Which member left a demanding corporate career and moved to another continent to spend more time with family? Find out by going to www.bookinterrupted.com forward slash members and get to know us a little more. Parental guidance is recommended because this episode has mature topics and strong language. Here are some moments you can look forward to during this episode of Book Interrupted. I found that organization through my search to try to figure out how I could actually accomplish the act of reconciliation, like what that looks like on an individual level. And it makes the book so much more special that it's like you two found each other when you were supposed to, when you were ready to do the read. I got a teaser (laughs) because I know his wife's name and I was reading the book and I was like, oh. The impression that part of his mandate is to educate. You can come back later. And so the swarm of mosquitoes or whatever goes away. And I just thought that was so beautiful. Disrupted. Mind, body, and soul. Inspiration is with God. And we're going to talk it out. On Book Interrupted. Welcome to Book Interrupted, a book club for busy people to connect and one that celebrates life's interruptions. Hi, I'm Sarah. I started Book Interrupted and asked the closest people to me to be part of it. First, I asked my sister. Hi, I'm Meredith, the sister. My first friend. Hi, I'm Kim, the first friend. My old roommate. Hi, I'm Lindsay, the old roommate. My high school friend. Hi, I'm Kara, the high school friend. My good friend and Kara's sister. That's me. Hi, I'm Leah, Sarah's friend, Kara's sister, and the final member of Book Interrupted. If you'd like to join along, this book cycle is from September 12th to October 17th. It's Kim's book pick, and we're reading From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle. From the Ashes is a memoir that exposes what it means to live surrounded by prejudice and racism, and how to find happiness despite the odds. Published in 2019, From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle is a number one Canadian national bestseller, winner of the Kobo Emerging Writer Prize in Nonfiction, winner at the Indigenous Voice Awards, and was awarded a Book of the Year at the Globe and Mail and Indigo Books. In 2020, the book was chosen as a finalist for CBC Canada Reads. Author Jesse Thistle is a Métis Cree Scott PhD candidate in the history program at York University in Toronto. He also teaches there as an assistant professor where he's working on theories of intergenerational and historic trauma of the Métis people. All right, so it's personal journal time. Let's see what the members of Book Interrupted thought outside the group. This is my first personal journal for my book choice, which is From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle. I chose that book because I heard the author speak on a CBC radio show, and it was a funny story because it was a mystery to who it was that was speaking. I just got his first name, and I wrote it down because I was very intrigued about the story, and I wanted to learn more. And only through happenstance did I actually find out the info a couple of years later. I never forgot, but I had a I couldn't find, like, just the name Jesse wasn't enough for me to be able to nail down the story that I was looking for. I met a person who was reading it and she was telling me about it and I remembered what had intrigued me and her story sounded the same and so I said you know is that author who wrote that first name Jesse and she was like yes and I was like oh my god so that is how I found the book which is great I love that story. I wanted to use my book choice to draw attention to an Indigenous author, as well as to highlight an Indigenous experience in Canada. And so I felt like this book choice accomplished both of those goals. When you read this book, 
you will be invited into one person's experience. And I think that through the telling of Jesse's story, he really paints a picture of his experience. So I don't want to, I don't want to give anything away. I really hope that everybody is interested and wants to read the story themselves. I think that thing that resonates with me is that while this is only one person's experience, it is very similar to many, many, many people's experiences. I think the personalization of Jesse's story through the telling in this book allows a reader to have empathy for someone who you might disregard otherwise. He goes through his life having many experiences and at one point he finds himself homeless and drug addicted and if you were to just walk by someone on the street who you might assume is homeless and drug addicted you may be uncomfortable enough to just want to pretend like they're not there. I know that's a common reaction and so I think in reading this story and and Jesse's willingness and vulnerability in opening up and telling his story he humanizes what that experience is like for someone and then I hope for me anyway it it's something I take into then my experience and now when I see an individual who I would assume is homeless by judging that book by its cover I would engage differently because I have learned about how one might find themselves there. And then the judgment that you might hold is removed. So I'm really looking forward. I'm going to, I actually read the book a long time ago. And I mean like a long time ago before this particular intro personal journal. This is supposed to be about what I think I'm going to get out of it. I know the story when I got out of it. So I'm looking forward to reading it again because I know that there's more to get out of it. The story itself holds so much meaning on so many levels that I don't think reading it one time does it justice. I think it needs to be read again and again. So that is what I'm going to say right now about this story. And I hope that others will join me in the reading of From the Ashes. We just finished our first group discussion and I was supposed to record this personal journal before we did that. And so now I've said everything I have to say, but I just also wanna say uh, thanks Kim for picking this book. What a good change for a book to be something a little bit more story oriented instead of so much self-help, which uh, you all know that that isn't my favorite. So I'm really, uh, I've only read a couple of chapters so far, but I am really enjoying it so far. And uh, I don't really have anything else to say besides that uh, I will see you in my next personal journal and uh, I hope to have a lot more to say. Okay, see you then. Bye. I heard about this book before because of Canada Reads. I had wanted to read it. And then when Kim approached me and asked if she could do this book for Book Interrupted, I mean, all of her books are nonfiction, but, you know, mind, body, and soul is our thing. And she said it really falls into soul. And I couldn't agree more. I started the book. And normally I just read a couple chapters before we get going. And I am a third through the book. And I think it's just because the way he writes his story, it's empowering. He's such a great storyteller. The way he sews together each story, the chapters are small, but it's like precise. He like gets down to the essence, like the truth of that moment in his life. And it's an emotional book. I think also for me, knowing that, like I know he's getting his PhD, uh, reached out through his website to Jesse and his wife responded and just asked permission about our website and if they were okay with the images we were gonna use. And they said yes, but he wasn't able to go on our show. He was doing book clubs, like appearances on book clubs, but he is working on his dissertation. So just, I think that helps me because it's such a heartwarming, heart clenching anger, but there's also so much love in here. Anyway, it's just um, story and I of his life and there's so much truth in it. So I think knowing 
what the ending is just makes me want to read more of his journey. Anyway, I can't wait to continue reading. I had to force myself to stop for this recording and for our upcoming first discussion. So far, I think I'm already recommending it. Okay, this is officially take three. I have just recorded my personal journal number one twice. I'm told third time's a charm, so we will see. Fingers crossed, hoping that this one works. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but really I'm not because the first two takes didn't <laughs> turn out well. I'm really looking forward to reading this book. Um, I have been uh, since uh, maybe months ago it was now, since first finding out uh, what everyone's uh, book selections were for the book cycle for season one. Uh, and I'm glad that the time is now for From the Ashes uh, because it has been a long wait. And you know what? A perfectly timed. Uh, because in Canada right now, we are learning, many of us, not all of us, are learning about some of the tragedies that have been taking place for well over a hundred years in Canada around the residential school systems. And uh, I think our count is up to, what was it, 751 in Saskatchewan, 215 in Kamloops. Uh, the numbers keep rising as we keep discovering on these properties of the residential schools many unmarked graves. So this is something that we have to be talking about. As much as it is hard to discuss, it is hard to even wrap our heads and hearts around that something like this could be taking place. And I feel ashamed that as a white person, it has taken only until now to become aware of something that has been taking place for so long. Uh, we were talking about this briefly and how the majority of us just have this feeling of yuck. How could it have taken for it to finally come out in the news in a big way for us to be listening? So there is no excuse for that ignorance, but there is a way forward. And the way forward is a commitment to learning and to keeping our ears open and never forgetting. So this book is part of that commitment for me. It's not just about a nice read, although I am so looking forward to it. Uh, I loved what Kim had to share around why she chose this book. I also loved when we were doing our group intro uh, when Lindsay read a little bit of what was going to uh, be taking place in the book. I'm so excited to dive right in. I come from the theater and the theater, its roots are from oral storytelling traditions. And from what the lady shared with me, this is so in line with that, how one man can share his personal truths and for them to land on the reader and force them into a position of reflection, into finding our own truths. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. And again, it couldn't be more perfectly timed. So here we go. I can't wait to dive right in. And I'm very much looking forward to sharing more with you. I haven't started reading this book yet. I did watch a video from York University where Jesse Thistle is a professor. And in it, he's talking about Indigenous homelessness in Canada. He really drew me in. I'm looking forward to reading the voice of Jesse Thistle, the storyteller, while reading his autobiography. This autobiography covers a lot of difficult subjects, homelessness, drug use, overcoming trauma, indigenous history in Canada, subjects that are hard to understand and sometimes hard to talk about. Welcoming the opportunity to learn more about these things because I realize that I don't fully understand these issues completely and that's a weak spot for me. I'd like to grow a little bit more. I also enjoy learning about the perspective from somebody else, like a first person perspective going through this. I think it's important for us to be able to connect with somebody to hear empathy. I really admire anybody who writes an autobiography like that. To put your trauma out there into the world for everybody to see is not easy. And I think Jesse is really trying to help others by putting his story out there. And I really do admire that. It's perhaps why this book is so compelling to so many people because it's raw and honest, or at least that's the impression I get from the reviews I've read. I don't know if there's much else to say about this, seeing as I haven't started it yet. I'll check in on my next personal journal. Hello. I haven't started it yet. I just uh, read the introductory pages and I really think I'm gonna like it. I was really not looking forward to reading this based on nothing I have heard 
just an assumption that it was going to be a really uncomfortable read, especially considering everything of late that's been come to the surface about the Catholic schools and finding mass uh, burial sites or mass graves of um, Indigenous and Native Canadians. And um, I haven't gotten into it. I'm sure it's going to be a sad read, but it feels like an important read. And I'm excited now. Poignant timing and I think it'll be a good good learning. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm excited now that I've read the introductory pages. So uh, I think my apprehension was just like not wanting to be uncomfortable after our last, actually our last book was Nonviolent Communication, which all in all um, feels pretty light, but um, we recently in Book Interrupted read uh, White Fragility and that was a great book, a great read, great learning. And this felt a little back to back. Sometimes your brain wants to like do a little, take a little break from the reality of society and life and sadness. I know mine does. And um, I guess that was my feeling going into reading this book is like, oh, this is going to be tough work. Um, not that I should really feel sorry for myself. It's just reading for God's sakes. Uh, however, that was my initial intro into it. Um, aside from that, just from aesthetics, I love the cover and um, visually, and I love it when books have like a feel. Like it's, if you own this book, you'll know what I'm talking about. It has a texture, like a matte texture that I love. I know these things shouldn't be important, but there's something about the tactileness of some books that like really does it for me. So anyways, that's all I have to say so far. I'll see you on um, the next personal journal and hopefully have a little bit more to say about it. And I think it's going to be really um, inspiring and insightful and hopefully um, have a lot of great takeaways. So thanks KJ for this wonderful book pick. See you soon. This interruption is brought to you by Unpublished. Do you want to know more about the members and in Book Interrupted? Go behind the scenes? Visit our website at www.bookinterrupted.com. Book Interrupted. This interruption is brought to you by fried chicken. You know when you eat something that you know is not good for you and it tastes so good and then afterwards you need a nap because your body's like, oh no, you shouldn't have eaten that, but it tasted so good. Well, that's my interruption. That's what happened today, but it was delicious. But yes, I did need a nap after. Book interrupted. Let's listen in to this episode's group discussion. Leah hurt her back and her neck. Crazy hurt, like maybe going to the hospital, having problem breathing hurt. Oh my God. Right, so yes. she's not coming today. Kim, you start because it's your book. Okay, uh, this is funny because I'm terrible with the schedule. So I was like, oh, it's me, <laughs> it's me this week. <laughs> so the book that I chose is From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle. I feel like because this book is, well, I guess I feel like in general, we should probably acknowledge the land that we come from because most of it is unceded indigenous territory of some description or another. So I'm on the unceded territory of the Silk Okanagan Nation people. So the way that I found this book, I think I kind of like the story because I was listening to the CBC one day and uh, there was an interview with a person and he was talking about his journey and he had gone from having a, a difficult childhood through homelessness, a, a heavy drug addiction, to now uh, was coming out the other end, completing a degree. And he was speaking to, I and mean, he, he was probably promoting this book, but I caught it at the end. I didn't catch his whole name. I really, really enjoyed his, his story and how he spoke about it. And I was like intrigued. And all I did was I, I got my phone out and I made a note in my phone and all I knew was Jesse. So I was like, Jesse, and I'll figure it out. Like I'll Google it, like whatever. And then time went by. And then I was taking this workshop 
done by this amazing group of people. The organization's called Indigenize, and they do a lot of um, workshops where I guess the the focus is toward reconciliation and um, it's for settlers and indigenous people and you come together and like, I just, it's hard, it's really hard to describe the experience, but it's really super wonderful. And it, you just kind of explore how to be a better ally or how to further the cause or the the mission of reconciliation i got drawn to it because when i read the truth and reconciliation act and like knew that the hot phrase was reconciliation i was kind of skeptical because i was like okay yeah i hear the government writing it all out and listing all the things and whatever else but like what does it actually mean like what are we actually going to do and so i found that organization through my search to try to figure out how I could actually accomplish the act of reconciliation, like what that looks like on an individual level. So then in that organization, well, in those workshops, I met this girl who uh, is Métis and she um, was talking about this book. And then I was like, wait a minute, like what, a, like I, I recognized somehow from the story that um, it was the book, my long lost book that, that I couldn't find. I couldn't find anything by just searching Jesse. Like it wasn't enough information. <laughs> so, and I, I just couldn't find anything. And then she was talking about it and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, is the author's first name Jesse? And she was like, yes, it's Jesse Thistle, whatever. And I was like, yes. And I think around the same time was when, well, I probably bought that book. And then when Sarah announced she wanted to do Book Interrupted, I was like, well, I'm definitely doing this book. One of the only really shallow ways that I know to help support Indigenous people is to use my privilege to put the spotlight toward them. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick this book too, because I, I wanted to have and he's Canadian I wanted to have like a Canadian Indigenous author be part of the conversation so that's the longest version ever of why I picked this book <laughs> <laughs> I like it. oh I like it I like all the details isn't it interesting when books like that come into our lives mine was the four agreements I must have heard about it for a good few years and have it like almost moments where I almost engaged in it. And then I got to a point where I'm like, this is ridiculous. I wonder if I ever am going to get the book. And then, yeah, you just finally, if you're meant to read it, it comes your way. And I love how all those pieces came in and you just happened to go to the indigenized and just happened to be speaking with the girl. And she just happened to be saying the right words that allowed you to go ding. And it makes the book so much more special that it's like you two found each other when you were supposed to, when you were ready to do the read. That's awesome. Yeah. I love stuff like that. Coincidences that feel yeah. like it's the universe or whatever you want to call the unknown force driving mm -hmm. you on your path the way you're supposed to go. I love it. Yeah, it's so awesome. Yeah, I feel the same when I when it was finally my time to read the four agreements. I kid you not. It was as if it was like illuminated from like divine lighting <laughs> shining it and it was like raising itself <laughs> up to me. And I was like, I was like, it's been like four years. I was like, my time is now. No, like I just love it so like perfect but like honestly I'm not exaggerating it was as if the book was like under this spotlight I was like I see you it's our time and you're like the light is too bright though I can't read through that out of it I like For that sure. same experience when you're looking to connect to the universe and you just grab a book and I'm gonna think right now it could be actually any book but sometimes it might be a book you know like women who run with the wolves for example and you just open the book and whatever you read this is probably kind of like how horoscopes work too but whatever you read you it's relevant you know and you're like this is exactly what I needed to hear at this moment how crazy is that and you look around <laughs> it's like the best it was absolutely I couldn't agree more it is one of the best I get like that also with and maybe this is something we could discuss because it is born of like the indigenous way the whole idea of like spirit animals or your totems and all that as a white woman are we allowed to talk about spirit animals and all that I find that that experience of like what you described Kim when you like just happen to grab a book and you open it and it's like 
the exact passage you needed to read in that moment in time. I find it's that way with the animals and insects that tend to catch my attention and come to me. It's like perfect timing. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like if you have a dream about an animal and then you like look up that dream, like what's the meaning of this animal? It often applies to challenges or even triumphs that you might be going through in your life. But to answer your question about can white people talk about spirit animals, I think we can talk about it, but I know that there was uh, some bit of pushback because I think it was kind of appropriated for a time when a lot of people were being like, oh, that's my spirit animal. Or even saying to like a, a person that they felt, you know, connected to like, oh, you're my spirit animal or whatever. And then it kind of um, is undermining the sacriticity. Is that a word? Of the the whole experience, right? For Indigenous people, I'm, I'm not an expert on spirit animals, but I, I do believe it's a very sacred topic. I don't want to talk too much because I don't know. So I'll know I'll talk myself into a hole, but I know that it's sacred. And so we should proceed with caution anyway, or proceed with respect. This makes me think of something I just watched actually recently. There's an Indigenous woman like you, I didn't catch the beginning of this interview she was doing. I caught the end. So I don't even know who her, what her name is and why she was being interviewed. But what she said was that, I guess she has an organization and people often after her lectures would contact her about how they would have their DNA tested to see if they were indigenous because they had a great, great grandmother they thought and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and normally I tell them where they can go and stuff, but to be quite honest, that's not the indigenous way. Just because your DNA is indigenous doesn't mean you're part of our community. Community is different. We need people need to accept you into the community. It doesn't have to do with DNA with us. It has to do with being part of a community. It's not individualistic. It's um, us Collective. as a whole. Yeah. So she was trying to explain that. Anyway, so it's not thinking of just yourself. Well, what I do know is that most indigenous cultures are informed by the acknowledgement that everything is interconnected. It's often conceptualized as a giant web. There is no thing that I do that doesn't somehow create reaction or effect for everything and everyone around me from like a rock to an animal, mm. to the trees, to the lake, right? Everything is, is connected. And so the acknowledgement of that connection then really informs their place in the world. Like we all, there's a, I think I might've said this before, but it always resonated with me. So I'll just say it again. There is more of a perspective of we have responsibilities than we have rights. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I, oh, I have a right. I feel like that's really individualistic. What are my rights? Like me, me, but I have a responsibility is, is playing outward to the everything around me, everything I'm connected to, I have a responsibility. And so I think that that is relevant to what you were saying, Sarah, in terms of individualistic versus collective. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, have you guys I, started uh, to read the book? Because I there's a part that the, I just started and there's a part at the beginning about kind of everything connected and how he's out with his grandmother and they're, I think they're, oh, they're picking berries for something. And the, the mosquitoes swarm and he starts swatting them away. And she says, no, 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 you don't swat them away. They're just part of cre creatures. And so she says something and basically says like, we are, we are, you know, we need, we have a job to do, please let us do this job. And then uh, you can come back later. And so the swarm of mosquitoes or whatever goes away. And I just thought that was so beautiful. You know, because you think about mosquitoes as these really annoying things, but it's like, well, no, that's, they all, every single thing plays a role. And if we all thought of it that way, you know, we would all just be better off, I think. I don't know. I like that part of the book too, a lot. Yeah. I was uh, watching an interview uh, with Jesse Thistle on YouTube yesterday. He was talking about the medical system and he touched on that. He said, you know, in Indigenous culture, we see that we are all related, like everything is related and we need our doctors, I'm paraphrasing here, but basically if we need the doctors to believe the same thing, that we're all, we're all part of it rather than, you know, what happens um, sometimes is that Indigenous people are treated as other when they go into the medical system, which is why they don't necessarily get uh, good medical treatment, for example. Anyway, I hadn't looked very much into this book until 
uh, yesterday when we got home from camping. I agree with you, Kim, like listening to him talk, he's, you know, he, he draws you in. Well, I feel like he's super, <laughs> like, I want to say that he's like wise, like you can hear his experiences. Well, and I feel like, and I don't know if this is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm saying something uncomfortable or inappropriate with the, we're all related with the interconnectedness. There's also like the relation to the future and the relation to the past. So there's this heavy resource that comes in an indigenous culture from the ancestors and their store, like everything that they learn. So like, again, it's not this individual moment in time, right? They're thinking into the future for their children and they're drawing from the past from their ancestors. And I feel like when he speaks, that's what I like, that's what the chemistry or attraction is to someone who is non-Indigenous. It's very, um, what's the word, like textured. I can hear his teachings as he's embraced his, because I think originally he may have rejected if I recall some of the passages in the book, like his heritage, because he got the impression just like how black people people right the whole white is right and everything else right like he took that internal teaching as well growing up in this society and so i think originally he rejected his heritage and his culture but in embracing it i hear all those i don't know if it's all the voices of his ancestors but the the depth of his spirit seems to be more than just the spirit of one person right like it's that integrated and collective kind of wisdom like the when you were speaking there the word that came to me is the wisdom the way that he speaks it's such deep knowing and it's just I mean and I think it also resonates with us because because again the whole reconciliation thing I'm trying to learn I'm trying to understand because I, I want to get involved because to hear the story like the true stories of indigenous people in Canada is is enraging and so when I learn the history it's just so true. Like, uh, and I don't mean the terrible experience of Indigenous people. I mean, you know, learning into their history and their culture, everything that they thought and still do think, like the way that they practice their life is just so simple and true. And I just feel like if we didn't, like if the country wasn't colonized, we would do like, there wouldn't be global warming. Like, I mean, like just the way that they perceive and treat their surroundings, everything. I just feel like there's so much to learn from indigenous cultures and people and ways of life and everything else that that's what motivates me forward. And that's uh, brings me back to why I would pick a book like this because I want everyone to understand how much knowledge they have because it's been undermined and undervalued since contact. So, uh -huh. and he's just Absolutely. one single rep representation of it. And what a story of resilience. What is he going for now, Sarah? Doctorate or something? Remember, he was, he's busy. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's doing his, yeah, his PhD. Because he was going to come on. I had contacted him and his wife. And, ooh, here's a little thing. I won't say it until the next episode or when we're closer to the end. But um, because I emailed his wife, there was a little... Well, you got a spoiler, a, little, a teaser? As I'm reading it, yeah. <laughs> I got a teaser because I know his wife's name and I was reading the book and I was like, oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, think so. I think it is. Anyway, because I'm I've read almost... I'm a third way through the book. I was trying to not read it, but I read it anyway. And uh, yes, yeah, she she originally he was going to go on our show to be interviewed, but um, now he's he's in the middle of writing his dissertation, so he's not taking any more. He's busy. Clubs, right? He's busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a little busy. He's a little busy. Yeah. And I was thinking that um, in the book he does Kim because I've read a little bit further. Um, there's one part where he tells um, when he was younger, because like you said, he realized that he was being treated different. So he told some kids at school that he was Italian. And then he embraced all of the negative stereotypes, right? And he's like, well, I'm the crazy Indian. And that's like the beginning of his journey. Like that's how he formed an identity for himself. And that's like the beginning of his addiction kind of rabbit hole too, is really embracing that identity that somebody else gave him, you know? Like it's just so fucked up. Yeah, it's such a good storyteller because as you're reading it, that's why I think I've read so much of the book is because it's kind of like how Untamed was like bite-sized. So he kind of bite-sizes the stories of his life and slowly is sewing it together is the only way I could describe it. And it's 
it's very hard to stop reading the book. I yeah, literally I had agree. to be like, okay. I have to stop reading because we have to have dinner. <laughs> like I just read it nonstop yesterday. I do something and I come back and then read another chapter. And then I do something and come back and read another chapter. Like anyway, yeah, it's a real, so far, like a, it's, he's an excellent storyteller and it's of his own life too. So, so the authenticity it, stamp so. and also not just that he's a great storyteller, but he, you know, I haven't, I haven't started the book, but based on this interview, I get the impression that part of his mandate is to educate other people. And so maybe that's part of what we're picking up too, is that we want to be educated and he's, he's there telling us everything in a very effectively, because he's such a good uh, storyteller. And, and he's like telling it, it as down. those things happen to his life. It's not, it's like you're reading it and you're like, that's what you're so angry or upset. Like it's a roller coaster ride of his life. I'm only up to him being a child, right? I haven't even gotten into the other part yet. And the thing is, he's just painting you a picture of his existence, right? So it makes, yeah, it makes you go on this, this, this roller coaster. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Book Interrupted. If you'd like to see the video highlights from this episode, please go to our YouTube channel, Book Interrupted. You can also find our videos on www.bookinterrupted.com. A book club is just a book without members. Join the community by following us on Facebook, Instagram, or sign up for exclusive content through our website at bookinterrupted.com unpublished. We'd like to give a big shout out to our listeners. Your support makes this all possible. Thank you for the uplifting feedback and for recommending us to family and friends. We love hearing from you. Please reach out through our website at bookinterrupted.com fans or by emailing connect at bookinterrupted.com. We appreciate you for taking time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. See you next time on Book Interrupted. Moments you can look forward to on next week's Book Interrupted. Shame about his journey or his existence, like his identity. I just, it makes me so mad. You still get to learn, but you're learning through someone else's emotions and views and stories and stuff. You know, and villains do bad things. And there you go. There's your boxes. Don't come out of them. It's where you just don't really hear about that, especially with big authors. They don't necessarily like join. Yeah, it's like the difference between explaining to somebody how a strawberry tastes and letting them eat a strawberry. Book Interrupted. Never forget, every child matters.